Heritage Steel has been around for over 40 years in one form or another, and for the past couple weeks, we've been testing their two latest lines. The decade-old Titanium series and the brand spanking new Eater series launched in collaboration with Eater.com just over a month ago. Some quick history before we start, the Hen family bought the Volrath Consumer Division and their Clarksville, Tennessee factory back in 1983. Since then, the brand has gone by several names, including New Era, Hammerstall, and most recently, Heritage Steel. The third generation of Hen in the family business, Danny and I, have gone back and forth in our DMs about what makes a good piece of cookware for months. Unbeknownst to me, during that time they were developing the Eater line, and Danny sent over all of these units under our new review unit policy. That means that we're going to donate all these units when we're done reviewing them, and brands get no insight or control over the process whatsoever. Let's get into it. The biggest difference between these two lines, and the recurring theme throughout this review, is going to be that the Titanium series differentiates itself by having an inner layer made of 316 Ti stainless steel, as opposed to the more traditional 304 stainless steel on the Eater series. That means that it's more resistant to a type of corrosion called salt pitting and is going to give it a bit longer of a lifespan. Is pitting a huge deal? On a 10 year timeline, yes. Uh, eventually, just about every pan on the market will pit through to the point where the aluminum core is exposed. Note that that is not remotely enough aluminum exposure to be any type of health concern. It's just going to start reacting with your food and will taste kind of off. Heritage Steel also has a great replacement policy for any cookware that degrades enough that performance is reduced. So even if the Eater series does corrode faster, you can still replace it at a reasonable price pretty easily. For care, the Titanium series gets an eight, and the Eater gets a six. As a cost-saving measure, both lines actually use the exact same base profiles, with the Eater series just updating the handles and finishes. That might not sound like a lot, but it's a pretty significant upgrade to me personally, because the Titanium series' handles feel like off-the-shelf parts from mismatched lines. The lid handles feel kind of colonial, and the bulbous helper handles might go with them, but the long handles kind of feel like the cheap shower head handles from my first apartment back in the early 2000s. The Eater line's kind of industrial light handles and brush finishes feel significantly more modern, even though they're notably cheaper. For design, the Titanium series gets a four, and the Eater series gets a seven. The Eater series is in a dead heat with the rest of the market materials-wise. They are five-ply, but that has been proven again and again to be just about the exact same performance as tri-ply. The Titanium series uses the exact same construction, but it's competing on that 316 Ti inner layer, which just reduces corrosion. It doesn't stop it, it just slows it down. My biggest concern going in was that the aluminum layers in that five ply mix are quite thin, but in use, it hasn't made a significant difference. The pans are all responsive and comfortable to hold. I end up holding like way off the back of this handle, which is probably more a me thing than a it thing, but to my surprise, I think I would be hard pressed to find a difference in performance between these and lines like All Clouds D5 without significant scrutiny. For materials, titanium gets an eight and ear gets a five. As a brand, Heritage Steel's main value proposition is that they're made in the USA, and the value of that is something that Danny and I have debated about for months. This is obviously stated in contrast with Chinese production, which has its fair share of issues and gets beaten up on pretty regularly, some fairly, some not. But my take is that a lot of the issues come down to the individual company rather than some form of cultural manufacturing exceptionalism. Which begs the question, does that USA-based manufacturing meaningfully improve the consumer experience? Danny contends that it gives Heritage Steel the ability to adapt more quickly and the opportunity for greater transparency. From my perspective, it's really hard to make an argument that it makes a difference to consumers. That more expensive labor increases costs and means that the company has had to run a pretty limited factory, which is just going to mean production issues. The Titanium series, their flagship line, had misaligned rivets that would easily catch food and some pretty gappy lids. Both of those are issues that are not super common in this product category. But Danny said they've been upgrading the factory and the Eater series units we got had none of the issues from the Titanium series, so maybe that's a thing of the past. The price point is also much more competitive, outpricing brands like Maiden and Allclad for a reasonably similar product. For value, Titanium gets a two and Eater gets a seven. It's fun to see the evolution of a brand firsthand. And while I wasn't able to get Danny to spill any insider info there, um, I think there's a number of possible product expansions, some of which are easier, some of which are harder. You know, generally it's gonna be something stainless steel stamped into some form. From the outside, it feels like the writing is on the wall, that the Eater series and lines like it will eventually subsume the Titanium series, whether Heritage Steel is planning for that or not. The Titanium series is putting all of its metaphorical eggs in the 316 Ti basket, and I'm not sure if that one upgrade is enough to overcome its greater cost or its flaws. Meanwhile, Eater isn't a brand I personally associate with home cooking, but regardless of the brand, it feels much more in line with what we expect from home cookware today. The longer handles on the Eater pan are also quite nice. It's not a game changer, but it's decent quality at a more reasonable price point, and it genuinely feels better than a lot of the cookware we test. And there I think fun will come down to how much do you like the brand Eater.com? For me, fun for the titanium is gonna get a two, and the Eater is gonna get a six. 
That brings the Titanium series to an initial cult score of 4.8 and the Eater series to an initial score of 6.2. I can't picture myself recommending the Titanium series to really anyone in 2024, but the Eater series pleasantly surprised us, and though it doesn't have the ultra low price point of our budget favorite Goldilocks, I do think that its nicer construction represents a decent price for performance upgrade. Maybe one of our advantages is that as a company, we don't have to be as greedy, maybe. Because we don't really also. have shareholders exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's my dad and my grandpa, and you know, we're just trying to make it work.